About six years ago, I was approaching the end of my master's degree in AI. And despite studying a variety of different projects involving machine learning, genetic algorithms, and even generative AI, I couldn't help but feel like we were still so far away from creating true intelligence with computers. Yes, AI, and more specifically machine learning, has been a revelation in so many ways, helping us diagnose illnesses, detect fraudulent activity, optimize traffic flow, and so much more. But if you've worked with AI in practice, you'll know. AI has always been more like a specialist, very good, but at very specific tasks. And unlike humans, they don't generalize very well to other tasks. So to me at the time, the idea that AI would completely automate people's work seemed quite far-fetched, except I was wrong, very wrong. Only two years later, we saw a massive leap forward for AI. That's when OpenAI introduced the world to large language models with the release of GPT-3, the predecessor to ChatGPT. It was basically one big experiment. What would happen if we gathered all the data we can find every book, every article, every research paper, and trained an AI with the most powerful computers available. Many of you will have tried ChatGPT and seen for yourselves. What we get are signs of intelligence, even without programming it to do so. It can write in a natural way. It can answer questions on a huge range of topics. It can read and write code. And it can do different forms of writing, like articles, songs, and poems. What's impressive is it does those things surprisingly well. But what's arguably more impressive is the way it can reason and recognize patterns in similar ways to us. Using just natural language, we can ask a question or give it an instruction, and somehow it understands our request. AI now is no longer just a specialist, and that in itself is a huge milestone. Now, many of you will have tried ChatGPT or something similar and thought, this is great for brainstorming ideas, writing content, doing some editing, and maybe even answering some queries. But that's just the tip of the iceberg of what generative AI can actually do. To understand just how far this technology can go, I'd actually like to start with what it doesn't do very well first. And you'll see why in a second. Now, a lot has been said about whether this technology is actually intelligent. That's because they're not perfect. They can make mistakes. For example, it can completely make up facts, also known as hallucinating. The information it has isn't always up to date. And surprisingly, it can struggle with even basic maths. And it can oftentimes struggle with multitasking. These can be big issues depending on what you're trying to do. But if we're going to be fair, we're not perfect either. Many of us can struggle with those same things as well. But maybe a counter argument to that is we still manage to solve problems and get things done. Why is that? That's because our intelligence isn't confined to just our knowledge and what we know. It encompasses a lot more, like our ability to plan ahead and break down problems into smaller problems. It's down to our ability to reflect on the outcomes of our actions. And of course, down to our ability to use tools to help us complete a given goal. Now here's where things get interesting. What if we try to use or replicate the way humans approach problems using language models? It's at this point when we stop thinking about AI, like ChatGPT, as just a chatbot that requires constant human input to complete a task, and instead think, think of them as agents or autonomous agents. Agents are designed to automate workflows end-to-end -end with little to no human intervention, and they do so 
by planning their tasks, reflecting on the outcomes of their actions, and using tools to help them out. So very similar to us. To understand what agents actually do, let's think about how we generally operate. Practically everything we do nowadays involves our phones and our computers. The applications and programs on our devices act as tools to do certain things. So if I'm writing an essay, I might use a web browser to access the internet to research a topic. If I'm an accountant, I could use a different set of tools, maybe Excel or an accounting software. If I'm a programmer, again, I have a different set of tools. But we're basically constantly using a variety of different tools to help us with a given task. And this is where agents are a bit different. Instead of us using those tools, we just describe to an AI what the task is and what the end goal is. And then it plans which tools it needs to use and how to use them. And then it actually does it on its own. Not only can they complete the task much quicker than we can, but in theory, we wouldn't even need to know how to use these tools in the first place. So imagine this, you're an entrepreneur, you've just started a business and you need a website, but you have no idea how to build one. But instead of hiring a web developer, you just describe your business to an AI, you describe how you want the website to be, and then the AI uses the same tools the web developer does and builds the entire thing in a matter of seconds. Or maybe you've been collecting a bunch of data and you want to make better business decisions. Instead of hiring a data analyst, the AI is using data analysis tools to answer your business queries instantly. Or finally, maybe you're just looking to travel somewhere nice. So you ask an AI to plan your trip for you, finding you flight options, accommodation, and even plans your activities once you're there. That's the potential of agents. And believe it or not, we're not far off from that world. Agents are like digital labor, capable of automatically browsing the web, navigating our files, using our applications, and potentially even controlling our devices for us. So how is this all possible? It sounds a bit like science fiction, but because of today's technology, it's simpler than it seems. First, an important thing to understand is that everything we see on our screens is just a visual representation we can make sense of. So but in the background, everything is formed of code. So for every button and for every action you can do, there's a piece of code associated to it. And here's just a couple of examples. This is the programming way of using ChatGPT. So instead of going on the website and using their interface, you can just run this line of code and it gives you GPT's answer. Similarly, this is how you might do a Google search. So uh, just an alternative to Google search. And this is how you might use uh, or create a Word document. The only reason why I show this is because when things are formed of code, it means we can assemble programs that combine different functionalities and different applications in creative and interesting ways. And, and that's a core aspect of how agents work, by its ability to use different tools interchangeably. And so if we look at the framework of, a, of an agent, it consists of a set of actions it can do, and again, these actions are just code, just like we saw in the last slide, and a language model, like ChatGPT. And first, the user gives a request. In this example, it might be, book me the cheapest flight to London. And then, we start a cycle of questioning and answering with the language model. And we can ask a question as simple as this. Based on the user's request, what do you think the next action should be? Because language models are so smart, we can get them to break down a task into a series of actions it needs to perform to complete the end goal. And so in this example, it might be searching flights. And again, because language models can read and write code, we can get them to format the input just how we need them to be to execute that code with no errors. And then once it does, we can get the output, which might be a list of flights and their prices, and then we repeat this questioning process again. Based on the information you have now, what do you think the next action should be? And then 
we repeat this process over and over until the task is actually complete. So agents are just a feedback loop of planning and executing actions using language models. And I mentioned that we're not far off having agents, but in reality, they're already here. For example, Microsoft's Copilot is an example of an agent. Within Excel, you can just use natural language to get it to analyze your spreadsheets and reports without needing to know all the fancy formulas and all the complex functionalities. Similarly, Shopify has a sidekick that helps you build a website using AI. Hyperwrite acts like a personal assistant that can book flights for you, order takeaway, and even organize your emails for you. And even ChatGPT itself has a whole catalog of agents known as GPTs. And this is just the start. I believe many more businesses will start incorporating agents both internally and as part of their products and services. Language models are getting cheaper and cheaper every year to the point where they're virtually free. And not only that, but they're also very accessible and easy to use. So practically anyone with basic programming knowledge can get started with building an agent. But as agents become more widespread, more intelligent, and more sophisticated, it will likely change the way we think about computers in the first place. In the same way that the transition from a command line interface to a graphical interface completely revolutionized the way we interact with computers, perhaps the next evolution of that is a kind of AI-assisted interface, maybe like Tony Stark and his AI, Jarvis. There's no doubt that a world full of intelligent assistants and agents is going to be strange. The technical skills we once thought are unique to us are now being outsourced to AI. Even as a data scientist myself, I wonder how long before an AI can do the things that I can do. It is a scary thought. But at the same time, as an optimist, I can't help but feel like it's also incredibly empowering. With our skills democratized, the barriers to innovation are lower than ever. More people can participate in creating solutions and building things that were once only in the hands of large corporations and specialized professionals. And in the same way that Jarvis doesn't replace Tony Stark, I believe our relationship with AI will always be one of a kind of a collaborative one. Sure, AI might be better and quicker at using the tools than us, but that gives us an opportunity to focus on the bigger picture and use the tools that actually matter, our creativity, ingenuity, and human experience. Thank you.